This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Long before Infosys, TCS and Wipro, there was ISRO in Bangalore, which gave this city its claim to be the tech capital of India. And with me in this week's Walk the Talk, none else than ISRO chairman, Dr. G. Madhavan Nair. Welcome to Walk the Talk. It's a, it's, it's a rare interview for an ISRO chief on, on a news channel, probably the first. Yeah, thank you very much. And I, I appreciate you taking the initiative to project the ISRO in this uh, program. And uh, welcome you to the headquarters building here. Uh, as you know, the space program has uh, about uh, four decades of history. Right. We started in 1963 with uh, launching small rockets. From there, now we have matured into an organization where we can build satellites for Earth observation, right. communication, and launch them with our own PSLV and GSLV. And you come to a stage where you can carry payload for NASA. Uh, yes, I think it's a very good uh, recognition from the international community. They believe that uh, we have got good technology, we have got uh, good tools. So we are carrying two instruments from NASA to Moon along with the main instruments from the Indian scientific community. I, th I, th I think all Indians felt very proud when the gentleman from NASA was here, almost apologizing for decades of, of embargoes and, 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 and no communication, lost decades of Indo-US scientific relationship. And then just the idea that an Indian space vehicle could be taking payloads for NASA. It's a good feeling. Uh, well, I think uh, to start with, we had a good cooperation with NASA. Right. Right. In fact, the initial rocket launchings they have supplied and also their satellites we use for our community development programs right. and so on. Right. But there was a lull period in between right. because of various reasons. But now we are looking forward to strengthen relation and this is a very unique opportunity. You know, we have a call for proposal from the international community. Out of that, uh, something like uh, 30 proposals we received. We shortlisted six of them. Four happen to be from for, Chandrayaan. Uh, for the Chandrayaan. And uh, of course, four of them are from the European community and two from USA. And of course, we had to go through a lot of formalities, getting the administrative approval from their side and so on. But uh, finally, uh, we have decided that we will carry these instruments along with the, our moon mission. And it, is, uh, we, it gives a nice feeling to work with NASA again. Right. Is, it, is it because of this new confidence and the fact that, that, that embargoes uh, and sanctions are now becoming a thing of the past and new confidence of your achievements that an ISRO chairman is now willing to, <coughs> to speak to the media like this? like in his first ever interview freely? Uh, ISRO has always uh, looked at, you know, how we can achieve self-reliance in this right. field. Of course, uh, I will say that embargoes has helped in accelerating the self, uh, uh, indigenous development program. Right. Today, if we take the, all our launch vehicles, more than 95% are indigenous. Similarly, the satellite technology, we have got a total system engineering capability. And even we are trying to build the satellites for the foreign countries. Like, uh, you know, the European EADS consortium, right. they have come with us. We are building two satellites to be sold commercially in the international market. For me to understand more about rocket science, it will take uh, several walk the talks and I think many years of hard work. But one thing that fascinates me is the way uh, ISRO has been able to produce a lot more results, tangible results, than two other parallel orga organizations, if I may say, the Department of Atomic Energy, uh, I'm only talking the commercial side, not, not the defense side, strategic side. And also uh, DRDO, uh, which does a lot of work out of Bangalore. Uh, what, is, what makes ISRO tick? Uh, well, one thing is uh, we are a highly focused organization. We have got uh, all the R&D efforts are uh, targeted towards specific programs. Right. You know, right from the beginning, we, draw, we had a 10-year profile drawn up, and we try to derive the missions out of that. See, for example, broadly we declared we should have the self-reliance in accessing the space. Right. So that means the rockets has to be built, the control systems has to be built, the navigation system has to be built, and so on. But this technology is not available from anywhere else. So we had to assemble our own laboratories, our own uh, scientific community to work on this. And uh, really, it's a cutting edge of technology, the work is concerned. But we have taken a balanced approach by which the research what is handled in the, our laboratories right. Right. Uh, they are taken to a certain level of perfection and then later transferred to industry for productionization. So, we, we try to see that so you, industry you, you also... You've commercialized your skills. Uh, yeah. To great extent, we are able to transfer the right. skill to the industry so they can... And also, 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 you know, your predecessor told me that you've also benefited, ISRO has also benefited from remaining in an open domain, in an aggressively open domain. 
uh, well, basically, we are answerable. We declare program. When we say 10 years, we want to achieve such and such right. thing, that has to be met. Right. So parliament and everybody is reviewing us. And also, we have more than that, the peer scientific community. Right. We make use of that. Whether it's from the institute or from the other organization, they come and sit so and you, review you, our program. So you've exposed yourself to peer review? Absolutely. And that has helped us in uh, sharpening our technology and bringing a world because, because, you know, you've, you've also helped uh, our strategic drive a great deal, strategic and defense. So th that has not hampered you. Uh, it's very tempting in that situation to put a cloak of secrecy and say no accountability. We'll do our own thing because in public interest we can't talk, talk more uh, about it. Well, of course, our, the technology what we've developed also is uh, highly sensitive. Right. So we don't publicize that right. much. But at the same time, the people who are supposed to know, we are exposing them. And also our own uh, community, the ISRO has got a, a very wide spectrum of scientists involved, uh, right from the physics, chemistry to metallurgy and all those you have, you have the finest yeah. brand ambassador any, any organization could have in Dr. Kalam. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, his strength comes from, you know, the harnessing and synthesizing the efforts of right. multidisciplinary mm -hmm. people. Right. In fact, that is a unique culture we have developed. Right. You know, we, we can put together teams and right. see that uh, end objective is achieved. If, if you take the rocket, you know, for example, here we have the models of uh, PSLV and JSLV. Right. Um, uh, this, I will say, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. Right. It is today our own horse right. launcher. Uh, it can carry something like uh, two tons of uh, payload into the low Earth orbit, right. and maybe about one, one and a half ton into the polar orbit. Uh, so this uh, vehicle we have developed uh, over a period of 10 years. It is the smallest rocket which is sitting here, which is uh, what Dr. Kalam has given, the SLV-3, right. one right. stage of that. And this contains about 10 tons of propellant. From there, 150 tons of propellant goes in the first stage here. Then we have got a very soft secret second stage using liquid propulsion system. Then, of course, third stage, fourth stage, uh, all four stages put together. You know, uh, uh, num uh, more than 100 subsystems are inside. I believe Dr. Kalam still takes a lot of interest in the work here. Uh, well, I think he listens to us and uh, perhaps I think he has become uh, the best salesman for us, our yes. tele-education, telemedicine program. And you listen to him as well. Uh, of course, he is my guru, <laughs> so I, <had> to, <laughs> I, I learned all the things from him. Right, right. And, uh, I, uh, of course, uh, I had an opportunity to work uh, with then, him. Uh, Dr. Madhavan if you can take a minute, uh, for people like me and a vast majority of our viewers, tell us the difference, GSLV, PSLV, SLV, these are all acronyms to us and we feel very proud, you know. All of us are boys when it comes to rockets, uh, or kids. Uh, 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 well, uh, I would draw your attention to this chart here. Where we started, the first uh, rocket system that we made right. to put a payload into orbit. Right. See, what happens is this payload, if it has to stay in orbit, we right. have to give something like 7.5 kilometer per second velocity. Right. That is something like uh, thir close to 30 times the speed of an aircraft. Right. So that velocity jet aircraft. jet aircraft. So we have to have the number of rocket stages built into it. And you can see it's a relatively tiny compared to the PSLV right. here. Uh, we put 40 kilogram into orbit. Right. From there, we try to enhance the payload using the same subsystem and wet our hands in new technology, etc. And through ASLV. Uh, that took 150 kilogram. From there, it is a tenfold multiplication. Right. 1,500 kilogram, you can take it to a near Earth orbit, 600 to 700 kilometers above Earth. So, as I mentioned earlier, the solid propellants are involved, liquid propellants are involved, various sophisticated uh, navigation, guidance systems are involved. This again, a totally indigenous effort. You know, the aircrafts, they have to pilot and go to places. We use uh, gyroscopes and accelerometers. Right. Right. Those technology, nobody will give us. Right. Uh, we have to start from scratch. It is almost like eyes and ears for a human being. Right. Then there is a computer system on board which does the calculation of the position, right. velocity and all those things. Uh, the entire system has been developed and validated. Once you launch, you have practically no control with that. It is taken over by the right. onboard system. It automatically goes to a precise location, leaves the payload in this. And, and GSLV uh, uh, practically uh, doubles this load? Virtually. Uh, actually, this can carry equivalent, if you talk about, in a geotransfer orbit about right. one ton. And this can take two tons. Two ton. And now, we are not satisfied with this. Right. This can meet most of our communication because payload requirements. Because your satellites now are almost in the four ton category. Yeah, three to four ton. We are. Right. So we are targeting developing the next generation launch vehicle. Right. Uh, technology derived by and large from here. Right. But we will go for a large solid booster, a right. 200 ton solid booster, and a heavy cryogenic stage, about 25 ton cryogenic stage uh, going here. And so with this, uh, we hope by about 2008 or so. And what does quarter, it do for me as a citizen or as a taxpayer? Four tons of payload it can deliver. Right at the same price as the GSLV here. That means 
half the cost of what we are having. So what will it mean for me? Will, will it give me as good a picture of my house as Google Earth? Uh, well, that is being done by GSLV, uh, PSLV already. We have got the finest instruments on board. It can give one meter resolution. Uh, right. I think any house or any street can be identified. Right. And soon we will be mature into half a meter. And then also looking through the clouds, you know, so, the radar type of imaging. Right. So such technologies like are being... Like weather satellite. Right. So what we see on Google Earth, uh, this is a popular issue these days. What resolution is that? Where would you... Uh, uh, you know, it will be, see, most of the region they have put around 22 meter resolution. I it see. is for the uh, no, normal application. Is, uh, no so, 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 so we can but get much better resolution. No, than but that. some of the places they have collected images from the f foreign satellites, right. and that comes to one meter and better. Right. Uh, for example, uh, Bangalore or Delhi, if you take, they have given a very fine pictures of that, right. uh, which normally one is not supposed to do. Right. Uh, and uh, we have to see that. But we have got a capability to capture similar right. image of but, any but, part of the but world. But do, do you have concerns about that? Uh, well, I be? think that this is our defense agency should be worried about it and they have to work out uh, some method by which we can, uh, we need not display everything. We have to relay certain things has to be that, that, that is our own. But how can we stop Google from doing it? Uh, well, we have to have a dialogue with them. We have to convince them right. that uh, in the global interest, especially in the security environments what you are facing today. Even terrorism. Uh, yes. So we, we should not be putting such fine details in a public domain. Right. So, uh, so what happens when you launch your next satellite? Uh, from then until 2008, there is a gap? Uh, no, actually we are continuing with the launches with PSLV and GSLV, at least one each uh, per year. You know, I've, And I've, uh, after that, when you have a larger launch vehicle coming, we will take the heavy satellites also. So by end of this decade, we will be totally self-reliant in launching all our satellites. You know, one of my favorite images of all times, and I think of that, those of many Indians who have been around for some time, is a picture by Henry Cartier-Bresson, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, of a man carrying uh, the cone of a rocket near Thumba on his bicycle, <laughs> right? And I, I was just noticing, uh, as recently as 1967, this was the first rocket we launched. Yes. From this to, this at a time when, uh, when Americans and Russians were floating around outer space all the time. Uh, yeah. And just two years before, uh, man landed on moon. Right. So between, uh, between uh, that and this, we've bridged the gap. Well, you can see this is a tiny rocket which goes to about 10 kilometers. It looks like and, an anti-tank uh, rocket today. Right, <laughs> and it can put about 10 kilograms at that right. altitude. Right. From there, you can see this vehicle here. Right. Uh, this is actually one-fifth model. So right. as it stands, it is as tall as 11 story high. Right. And 290 tons are lift off. Such a powerful rocket we are able to conceive, right. develop and qualify. Right. And uh, recently we have qualified the cryogenic system also. Right. Now, talking about the moon, yes, the Americans and the Russians, they have gone to the moon in the 60s and late 60s and early 70s. But, you know, their concentration was more like uh, demonstrating to the world their power as well as to concentrating on some regions of the moon. But still, there is a lot of interest from the scientific community to understand the moon, its fundamentals, where it originated, what are the minerals, what is its surface features, and so on. So our Indian scientists have come out with the idea that we should have our own mission. The Chandrayaan is a result of that. We are going to use PSLV. That is going to haul up a load of around 500 kilogram right. uh, around the moon. And that will orbit the moon in about two years' time frame. It will cover the entire surface. We will have the terrain, you know, the highs, lows, etc. And then the minerals, especially we will look for helium-3 or maybe the water that is available and so on. So this is going to be a tremendous boon to the scientific community. You know, that's a question that we've asked many times. Uh, that 40 years after the moon went out of fashion, why are we rediscovering it? We thought everything that had to be done with this moon has been done. Moon has fascinated everybody right from the ancient days. You know, right. the, all the poets, philosophers, they were talking about the moon. Right. In between, we had a slightly better observation yeah. capability with telescopes and things like that. Then, of course, some samples also we have collected from there. But the entity yet to be known. So, a right. lot of countries, USA, Europe, Japan, China, all those people have their own programs of going to the moon and try. Of course, in the long run, if you look at it, it can even become a base right. for interplanetary travel.